everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's Wednesday, and patch notes for patch 8 point, er, sorry, 9.11 have been posted, and that means it's time for another patch note rundown. As always, I'll be going through the biggest changes in this week's patch, and letting you guys know what you can be looking forward to in the coming weeks. 9.11 is interesting in that it literally only has changes for champions in particular. It's a very small patch on the grand scheme of things, which is not a bad thing. We're right? trying to have a period of very low change, so... We can kind of all get used to the meta and what's going on and not have to constantly adapt to all the stuff that's coming up. That's not to say that there weren't important changes in this patch, so let's go ahead and jump right into things, starting off with Akali. Now, the biggest thing that these changes are doing here is reducing her ability to deal sustained damage. That's the biggest reason why she's strong in pro play, and honestly, that's one of her biggest advantages as an assassin, in that she has pretty reasonable sustained damage, as opposed to assassins, which pretty much use all their cooldowns and then are stuck either auto attacking you in the hopes that that can kill you or having to run away because they have nothing else they can do so the energy refund on assassin's mark means that she's going to get less energy back this is down by 10 at the maximum level so that really is going to hurt her ability to continue to throw out five point strike and get more damage down and the ratio has actually decreased quite substantially so she'll be doing less damage by constantly procking assassin's mark and will get less energy back each time she procs it as well so that means fewer casts of her abilities and it really means that Kali needs to be killing you with basically one rotation and won't be able to benefit from just spam Q until you die which will also hurt her ability to trade favorably in lane as well because she just won't get as many casts hurts her ability to trade with assassin's mark so this looks very small, but I think it is a fairly large nerf to Akali. We'll have to see how it shakes up at the end of the day, but I do think this is going to be go a long ways towards reducing her overall power level. Galio is getting some changes here as well. Ryder really trying to reduce his appeal uh, as a support and try to get him to be back to more of a mid lane type champion. So they're taking a lot of power out of his base damages and putting more of it into his scalings because that way mid lane, which is already going to build a small amount of AP, will benefit from this a lot more than support, which builds no AP whatsoever. Shield Duran's minimum damage and maximum damage have both been decreased, the base damages, I should say. Whereas, meanwhile, the AP ratios have gone up, and Justice Punch's damage is just down at early rank. So, overall, this means that Galio will have to build AP to deal damage. Again, this is a nerf to support Galio, and is just straight a buff to AP mid Galio. Gragas is getting some buffs here as well. It's not a very fun buff to look at because it's all base stats, but... This is the sort of thing that happens time after time after time, and a champion becomes meta. And Gragas is never a champion that's very far off from being meta in the first place. So important to highlight here, he is getting a pretty large bump to his health, his health growth, and his base AD. All of which are very important stats for his early jungle clear. So I would not be surprised at all if Gragas starts kind of starting to come back into a professional play as a flex jungle pick. Because these are very important stat buffs to Gragas. Moving on to Janna. Right now, the biggest problem with Janna is that she basically takes Comet, she maxes her W first, and she just presses W on the enemy champions in lane, does a ton of damage that is completely unavoidable, and pokes you out, which isn't really how she's intended to be played. She's supposed to be a very good peeling support, and giving her this additional harass and poke on top of what she normally does is too much for the champion. So Ryder trying to encourage more kinds of interaction with Janna beyond just point and click harass, so that way she actually has a reason to use all of her abilities in lane. Her W's cooldown actually now decreases its cooldown with rank, so that is a buff to the build. However, her, the base damage was significantly reduced at maximum rank. She loses 40 whole points of damage at max rank, so that's going to be a big nerf to that style of play. However, Eye of the Storm, it's each ability that slows or knocks back an enemy champion reduces its cooldown by 20%. So that's a pretty big deal, especially if you can, let's say, W somebody and then get a two-man knockup. That's 60% reduction on Eye of the Storm's cooldown already. Now, the cooldown was slightly increased at later ranks to compensate for this new CDR, but that means that if you get a 60% cooldown reduction on this, that's down to a four-second cooldown already on Eye of the Storm if you do what I just said, getting the one slow and the two knockups. And that means that with CDR you're potentially looking at a two second cooldown on eye of the storm that is absolutely huge and on top of that right buffed the shield value so that's actually really really big good janna players will be able to get a ton of more shields out in fight so really looking forward to see how this actually ends up playing out for janna i think overall this is going to be a buff at the end of the day but it does require janna to play more defensively and peel oriented as opposed to her current build which is max w spam w you win the lane 
Jace is getting nerfed on this patch. He's just too reliable of a pick, so right are trying to make him more tilted towards the early game. So he's a champion where, yeah, he's going to kick your ass in lane, but if you can get through lane, you'll outscale him at the end of the day. Shock Blast base damage has been reduced by, looks like, 15 points at maximum rank which is a huge deal. Sorry, I can't do math. 25 points at maximum rank, which is a huge deal. He's going to be doing significantly less damage with his poke, and the AD ratio was also reduced as well. So Jace will be doing a lot less damage as the game goes on. I don't know that's entirely enough for him, but this does nerf the biggest reason you pick Jace, which is Shock Blast spam in sort of the mid game and when you siege up around objectives. So I do actually like this nerf. I don't know if he needs anything else. We'll have to keep a close eye on him, though, and see what it ultimately does for him. Moving on to Karthus. Ah, yes. He has definitely been needing some nerfs. He's been so good at clearing the jungle that he can really hit his items, hit his power spikes, and just do so much cross-map damage without ever having to expose himself to harm because he's in the jungle. Requiem's base damage is being reduced as a result. It's losing 50 points of damage at all ranks, and the AP ratio has been reduced as well. Now, I am slightly disappointed by this because it does mean that mid lane Karthus is getting pretty substantially nerfed. Uh, because jungle Karthus is just so much better. It clears faster. It gets moves, item spikes more quickly. So these nerfs are basically designed to give players more time to see the Karthus scale up. And it means that he has to spend a lot more time building AP, getting to a point where he can get to that sort of one-shot potential with Requiem. So it is really going to nerf lane Karthus. I think jungle Karthus is really going to be just where he gets played now because of the nerfs here. But we'll have to see at the end of the day. He does have some advantages in lane versus in the jungle. So... We'll see, but this is definitely a huge nerf to Karthus, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him drop down significantly in priority, especially in professional play. Master Yi is getting some nerfs as well on this patch. Uh, Riot really thought the changes were going to be more impactful thanks to the Rage Blade and Conqueror nerfs, but at the end of the day, they weren't. Turns out letting him hit you multiple times with Alpha Strike was pretty damn good. So they're also re so they're removing some other assets in order to really try to bring down his power level. He no longer gains 8% bonus attack speed at level 1, so that should really help him take a lot more damage on his first clear, be a lot more vulnerable to counter jungling, and a lot riskier to play. And Alpha Strike now only deals 15% AD per additional strike, as opposed to 25% AD. So, he still can do a ton of single target damage if he can find someone isolated, but it's not going to be quite as much as it was before. So, we'll see, I think with the Rage Blade nerfs on top of this, that this might finally get him into a good spot. But at the end of the day, I still think that he's going to be in a very good spot, just because of the Q change they made, allowing him to hit the same target multiple times. So, we'll have to take a look and see how it ends up shaking up. And finally, want to talk a little bit about Yumi. Got some bug fixes. None of these really matter that much, but it, she does get assists on champion takedowns when she first attaches to somebody. And Zumi's now scales based on ability power. The movement speed decay. So if she has high AP, it'll just decay much more slowly, so she'll get to keep the movement speed for longer. So that's a pretty big buff to Yumi. Actually, forgot about the Zack changes here. Didn't want to talk about that. Players really, really wanted Zack's ultimate back to the way it was. It gave him something to do in fights beyond just walk around, knock people up, and then do nothing else for the rest of the fight. So they have actually changed how he works now. Now, he did receive some power pulled out of his other abilities based on the changes here. Stretching strikes is slow, has been reduced. The cooldown has been reduced as well, so he still has that to rely on in team fights. Unstable matter, I did get a damage ratio based on the target's maximum health, and that's to compensate for the let's bounce changes, which now it does, it's back to the way it used to be, which if you don't know, he basically jumped in the air, he bounced a couple of times, the first time he hit you, he would deal more damage and knock you up, subsequent bounces deal less damage and don't knock them up, but it gives Zack a lot more utility in team fights. it makes him a lot more disruptive as he's bouncing around and doing all sorts of damage and just being a nuisance in the back line so i actually really like this change i think zach's old ult was very disappointing to use it didn't feel very good for a lot of players so i think this is going to be a really good change to zach and really bring him back in a good way that a lot of players are going to appreciate now that's going to be it for me today guys thank you all so very much for watching like i said it's a very small patch this week let me know which changes you're most excited for down in the comment section below if you enjoyed today's video go ahead and leave a like and if you really enjoyed today's video consider subscribing i upload a video every monday friday and on patch days as well and if you're looking for graphical and entering content you can check out my blog link down in the description i upload an article just about each and every single day for your enjoyment once again thank you guys so very much for watching i appreciate it and i'll talk to you all later